OK, so we've seen the basics of working with strings. We've, we've even drawn some text onto, into our processing sketches, on, into the window. So uh, the, the path that we're on, we're, we're trying to get to this place where we have, ah, there's this large body of text that we're loading from a file. Or there's all these numbers that are coming from some website or some URL, some place. We're, we're pulling data in from somewhere. And uh, we're, we're almost there. We're going we're to start doing that in the next video. But before we can get there, I want to look at two key functions in processing that are going to allow us to take data and chop it up and put it back together. We're going to need these bits of we're going to need these bits of technical information to uh, successfully implement some of the some of the ideas. So the two the two functions I want to look at are split and join. Uh, so let's think. There's a couple different scenarios. One we might have like. Uh, are, are a string that's like it was a dark, you know, and stormy night. We might have a string that's oh, 10, comma 32, comma 91, comma 73, comma negative 4, 345. Uh, so there's a lot of different scenarios where we're going to get a lot of data, a lot of text all at once, and we want to look at it as uh, individual tokens. So in this particular scenario, it was a dark and stormy night. Uh, the application we'll look at is word counting. I want to know how many times has the word it appeared? How many times has the word dark appeared? And what can I discover by um, looking at the frequency of word usage in a particular piece of text? And that's a huge <laughs> uh, open field of text analysis. And we're, you know, we'll, get, we'll get into some of that. But a, another scenario is, OK, well, I have all these numbers. These are our, every single uh, temperature uh, the high temperature of every day in New York City for the last 10 days, or uh, the stock price of a certain, well, you can think of some less cliche <laughs> examples of data that you might have. Um, but so in, in both of these cases, I want to take these data sources and I want to split them up. Now, the, the truth of the matter is processing this particular scenario, this is, this, these numbers separated by commas, this is known as comma-separated values, CSV. And this is much like how data is stored in a spreadsheet. So if you've used Excel or Google Docs and you have this you know, rows and columns and all these numbers, you can export that, that spreadsheet, that grid of information, to comma-separated values, where each row is a separate line in a file, each column is a separate number separated by commas or separated by tabs. And processing has a, cla a built-in class called table. This object is designed to work with tabular data. So in the end, when we have data that looks like this, the examples we'll, we'll look at together <laughs> um, will be using the table object. But we're, we're definitely going to need, for this scenario, we're definitely going to need split. And in a lot of cases, we're actually going to need join. Because something we're going to see about the way we're loading data is we're often going to get data in as an array, and we don't want it to be an array. We, we have this array, and we don't want it to be an array, and then we do want it to be an array. We have to move back and forth between like a big string and an array, and a big string and an array of strings, and a big string, that kind of stuff, over and over again. Okay, I, I'm, I'm rambling. So, um, so it's why <laughs> I'm trying to make some kind of ridiculous argument as to why it's important to look at these functions. So let's just say that let's let's look at um, let's look at both of these scenarios. Uh, first, let's consider the. Um, uh, this this particular scenario. Okay, so let's say this is my string. The way that I can split this up into an array. So notice I have a single string, and now I want an array of strings. So the function I can use is called split. And what does split need? <laughs> split needs the string I want to split, which is this. And then a delimiter. I don't know if I spelled that right. The delimiter is the character or sequence of characters that, would, that causes us to split that string. It's what separates each individual token. And here it's very obvious. It's a comma. I want this as my first element of the array. This is my second. This is my third. And so the delimiter here is a comma. In this case, what's the delimiter? A space. Now, as we're going to see when we start doing word counting and trying to take a large body of text and divide it into individual tokens, each of which is a single word in that text, that we might have multiple delimiters, like maybe a comma, a space, a period, an exclamation point, a question mark. Any of those could be a delimiter. Or perhaps we might have some strange thing where I have numbers you know, that each have 
a colon and a semicolon. So there's a difference between saying I want a sequence of characters to be the delimiter, which is split, or any of these characters to be a delimiter. And uh, well, <laughs> since we're here at this moment, I think it's worth mentioning this. If I were to say split tokens, comma, semicolon, exclamation point, question mark, with processing split tokens function, this means any one of these individual characters could be a delimiter. So this would now work. I mean, I don't know why I would have this, but if my text looked like this, if my numbers, if my, if my string looked like this with split tokens, I would, I would get this is the first token, this is the second, this is the third, and uh, this is the fourth, and this is the fifth. So these are two functions that will come up again and again and again in different examples. So even though we are, we're going to see that the table object is a very convenient and powerful way to work with tabular data, let's just make a quick little simple example together, kind of like first very preliminary uh, data visualization, right? This is my data. It's these numbers, 10, 90, 32, 7, 87, and I want to visualize that data. So let's look at splitting it first. Split S and comma is my delimiter, delimiter. So now I should have all of these values in an array of strings. And we might say like, oh, I'm going to loop through that array and the length of the array and the index will go up by one and then I'm going to draw an ellipse uh, with um, <laughs> at i times 20 or 50 and then at some y value and then the, the, the size of each one of these circles is uh, the, the data that's in, in my original string. So notice I have an error here. So this, this is a key sort of piece of information. I have a string. I want to split it up into individual tokens, each one of which is a number. I do that. Now I have an array of strings. I'm going to loop through that array and use each one of those values as the diameter of a circle to draw. Of course this doesn't work. The diameter of a circle cannot be a string. The difference between this and these two things, this is the, the sequence of characters 1, 0, 0. This is the number 100. This might be trivial and obvious to you, but it's worth noting because this will be a mistake that will happen and come up in lots of different scenarios. Table is going to do a lot of this conversion for us, as will other uh, scenarios that we'll look at in the future. But this is worth noting. And the, a really quick and easy way to convert an individual value or an array of an individual string or an array of strings into a, a value, a number, would be, I'm just going to change this to vals, is using the int function. So I can, this is like casting. I'm casting all these strings into integers. Um, but, uh, and it's a function that's converting that array into integers. So now, excuse me, here we go. And now, as you can see, oh, I have my beautiful, perfect, I've never made such a wonderful data visualization ever. <laughs> I'm so pleased. So uh, you know, I, I can start to fiddle with this and, and make it better and uh, have it spaced out and maybe use some alpha and do different things. But the point here is that now we see that if the data is coming in like this, things separated by comma, that we can use split to split it up. Um, so I'm going to skip. I'm going to join is really just a reverse, and we'll look at that. Um, we'll look at that in, in the next video. I would say if, if, you, if you're looking for something to try before we get to the next step, uh, which is loading in a file that has lots and lots of stuff in it, I mean it's one thing to just have this like little string with just a quick sequence of values versus a file that has thousands of characters that has a, an entire novel or a play or has thousands of lines of, of comma-separated values. So that's what we're going to look at next. I would say if you're looking for an exercise, uh, see what you can do with uh, having a string that's a sentence. See if you can split it up into individual words and maybe draw those words you know, stacked or you know, in some configuration or design um, on the, in your processing window. OK, uh, hopefully this was recording this whole time. And if not, then I've just been talking to myself. OK, uh, I'll talk to you later.